Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and we're going to be playing an online battle again as the Wood Elves. They're super fun. Can't get enough of them. And we're going to be playing against Indy Pride, who has the Vampire Counts. I brought Durthu this time around. Wanted a big tanky lord. I have Eternal sh Guards with shields in the front. Uh, a pair of Treekins, and then I believe uh, three or four Glade Guards with Starfire Shafts. And a Spell Singer with the Lore of Shadows down through the center. The other Treekins in the back. And I have another Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts. Uh, there, so three in the center, and then over on the left, I have a deep wood scout with swift silver shards, wild riders, and spears. So that's a nice contingent. And the reason I had uh, the elves on that side that can shoot behind is because I expect them to kite. And then on this side, we also have another group of wild riders. So Indy has a big force of vampire counts moving forward, and I did want to show you these cool effects of chaos corruption in the forest. And then there, even the little blinking. Uh, eyes is really funny that they uh, they bothered to make those effects. Kind of cartoony, but uh, it, it really seems fitting. Uh, Indy's moving forward with a pretty big Vampire Counts build. He has a corpse card in the back, a Necromancer back there. And so this is going to be obviously to buff his main line, keep it strong and steady. And then in the rear he has uh, four or five Grave Guards with a Sternsman Grave Guard. So that's going to be his main bulky line, some zombies to pad the center. Then he's got skeleton warriors with spears on either flank, and they're mostly obscured. And then he has this dire pack, the um, regiment of renown. It's really strong for chasing down archers, so good pick on his part. And then he's scouting around here with a terror geist and two felbat units. He knows that I likes to hide units, uh, that I like to hide units, and that's usually what what elves are gonna do. So he was going around scouting, trying to find where my units were at. So he hasn't quite found them yet, and now he does. Or he's getting really close. So I had moved in preemptively with some bows uh, to try and give cover fire, try and pick at the um, terror guys. But I'm keenly aware that he can lunge at my archers with his wolf pack and his other units. So I'm quickly pulling up spears. I'm starting to shoot at his left flank, and then I'm immediate pulling back. Notice that the archers on the far left can fire while retreating, so that's a good use of the wing. On this side, he charges in at my bows, and yes, they were a little exposed, but I kept my tree kin really, really close knowing that this type of close encounter would take place. You know, ideally I would keep them behind the tree kin to prevent an assault, but I wanted to get shots off. And so I'm really running uh, on a razor's edge right there as I try and pull out my guys, and we'll see how many losses I take. I think I timed it just perfectly where these fell bats took a lot of hits from my glade guard. Tree can get in and start smashing these bats. And I'm able to pull out with taking almost no losses at this point. There's a uh, dire pack also coming in through the rear, and they're also going to get caught on these tree kins. So there I lose my first of the elven units, but I was able to draw in two of his forces, get them stuck in. So that was pretty good. On this flank, Indy does have uh, another unit that was positioned on the flank, Blood Knights here, charging forward. We'll get a nice clean look at these guys because they look freaking fantastic. Such beautiful models. They're cool to see in the game. And so, yeah, they're going to be pushing forward. So Indy's expecting uh, my forces to be distracted on my right flank. And always, it's good to keep an eye on where your opponent potentially has his micro distracted. And that's where he's going to try and move in with his knights in the back. Uh, however, I do have one additional wild rider force here hidden in the forest. Now, notice how initially I had three units. I only pulled out two. And that's a trick you'll often see me using. And take a look. The elves, yeah, they lost about 11 men. Um, but I'm trading against bats and I have these dire packs caught up and my spears are into their mix. So I think that's a relatively good trade. But as I was saying on the other flank with my hidden units, I had three units hidden. I took out two from the forest and what that does is it's kind of a psychological, psychological trick I like to pull. Where your opponent thinks, okay, he has hidden units. They see you reveal two of the hidden units and then kind of subconsciously they think, okay, now I know all the hidden units and where they are. However, by keeping that third unit hidden, it is actually going to stay, you know, um, out of the opponent's uh, mind because they think already I've revealed everything from the force and then they're going to move in there. And that's a, a move that any Pride's going to make. Another archer unit gets attacked by bats, but with the close support of my spears and Durthu, they're going to kill him pretty easily. So here's those Blood Knights chasing after my two units that had been pulled out from the force. He's trying to charge Eternal Guards from the back, which would be a pretty good trade. But he's going to think better of it and decides to uh, cancel that move order because I have more spears close. And then my deep wood scouts there are continuing to shoot into the skeletons as they pull back. He really wants to get into this media unit. And take a look at the animations as they shoot in the back. That is so cool. And they fire uh, with these shafts, I think, two arrows at once. 
So those Blood Knights are going to be pulling out. They didn't get the charge they wanted. They're going to look for a better opportunity. And then in the center, what I do is I charge out with my Wild Riders. The right flank is held down by uh, tanky infantry units and Durthu. And then my Wild Riders are going to go into the center and try and smash his fodder line of zombies. Over here, Starfire Shaft uh, Glade Guard units are going to pull out. And yeah, they've taken a couple losses, but his bats were pretty ineffective. Same thing on the other flank. The Terror Geist is trying to get around the rear, so I'll have to deal with that. Uh, but here is this Blood Knight unit retreating, looking glorious. And now they're going to try and circle back for an assault. He's going after my archers, but I'm able to stop them so he doesn't get a clean charge here. And then my Wild Riders come in from the back and just massacre these guys. So caught between Wild Riders and Spears, they're not going to be doing well. I also have archers now firing into the mix. And then I have a third Spear unit coming in, so this is going to be a really classic cleanup maneuver uh, against elite units. A really well executed ambush. Uh, and Indy Pride, I'm sure, was kicking himself uh, <laughs> for taking this loss. He's going to try and pop some Invocation of Nakesh to heal himself up, but that's not going to end up saving them because they're pretty much doomed. Same with his Spears there, they are losing, but he has more units coming in. Vlad's pushing in through the center, um, and this is where I had come in with my archers uh, and tried to focus fire. I also focus fire on his Terror Geist that is now caught with some tanky Treekin, and I've got him surrounded, so now I should be able to put a lot of damage, but with my archers turning about, it means that his center is going to be able to push forward, so I really have to do something. Luckily, it's all swords. On the right flank, he's committed almost everything into the mix. I have uh, Treekin, Durthu, and an Eternal Guard unit in here with Archer supporting fire. That should be almost enough, although with the Corpse Guard that's going to be pulling in here, it's going to have a lot of sustained power, so I'm going to have to definitely pull in. I'm going to cast one of my abilities here with the Lore of Shadows. Boom, look at that, just carves a huge swath through this middle group. So that was pretty awesome. And then I'm going to try and pin them from the flank with my Spearman. Archer is coming in, and then I'm going to land a nice clean strike with my Wild Riders on all of these forces. So that was like a triple punch into the mix of his meaty infantry. And then I'm charging in uh, with my archers firing away. So I should be good on holding back his main body. But now you're going to see Vlad von Karstein start to use his abilities. He's raising skeletons in the mix here, and that is going to be critical for tying down my archers. You can see how I destroyed his main line, but it doesn't matter when you can resurrect or summon uh, skeletons like this. So they're going to be popping up all throughout my archers, tying them down where otherwise they would love to be firing at the terror guy. So that's a really good use of that. Glad to see that spell buffed, uh, but still I have three units shooting away at the terror guy. Durthu's in the mix, so this line should be able to hold pretty well, but it's going to be a big slogging fight with the uh, Corpse Cart moving in to resurrect and help his units out. And then there's the Dire Wolves on the far right waiting to support. On this flank over here, things are kind of balanced, although his Grave Guard in the mix are going to start to turn the tide, but I've killed three or four units here. I do have another Eternal Guard with Sheared Unit, with uh, shields that I should be pouring back into the mix. And over here, Eternal Guards, uh, Master of Beguilement, minus 46 melee attack, the Indie Pride cast. That's to slow down my assault on his zombies. And yeah, so now we have a bunch of casting and summons tying down the center. And so I'm going to try and pull out with my archers and fire right back into that mix. Terror Geist is free, but I can shoot into it. And now my Wild Riders are going to be back in here to try and tie down his unit. So the Wild Riders are great units to keep other forces off of your archers' backs. So they're getting a lot of killing power, holding these guys at, at arm's distance. So yeah, you can see there now they're down to almost no health, which is awesome. But the terror guy is coming in here. It is starting to regen some health, so I really need to keep focus firing on. And now another summon of the, uh, the skeleton warriors. Gonna try and pin down my other archers. So clinically he's coming in and taking out one after another. But these wild riders are doing a good job of keeping the damage to a minimum, and boom, there, two of his units were destroyed. Although it's kind of ominous that I'm right here next to a graveyard, because as a necromancer knows, that's going to be a perfect place to summon. Now, finally, the Terror Geist is going to turn about, and it has kind of free reign on the rear lines of my troops. It's going to engage the next of my archer units. So this is pretty bad, but I can focus fire on it, and I'm going to bring my Spell Singer into the mix to try and save my units. On the far left, Looks like the tides are starting to turn against me with the Grave Guard here. They are chewing through my Spearmen, who don't do super well. Wild Riders in the back have been doing Hammer and Anvils, but it's just not enough. The center is still contested. Look at all these purple effects. Those are all newly raised units, so that spell is definitely keeping Indy's center alive. 
and he's able to get complete surrounds on me. It's a multiple sandwich deal going on here. Oh, my sturdy Treekin are doing pretty well. The Terror Geist has been seen on. My Wild Riders are turning about to uh, get a hammer and anvil, and Vlad von Karstein is starting to take concentrated archer fire, keeping him at bay. A nice charge into the rear of that skeleton warrior unit is going to make its numbers drop. But again, another cast right into the mix, and at this point, I don't have the Wild Riders uh, anywhere nearby. They're doing hammer and anvils, uh, and so they're not going to be able to save my archers. So that means another archer unit is going to be ticked away with only two really remaining. Spellsinger is going to try and help out. You can see here pulling into the combat, but that is going to rout my archers. So slowly but surely, he's picking away at my archer body. The center has been won somewhat, but now the Terror Geist chooses its moment, now that my archers are disrupted, to come back in. And he's going to pick out another archer unit, so slowly my rear line is being destroyed. On this flank, however, I am slowly kind of winning. The Corpse Guard is going to try and boogie on out of there, knowing that the battle is lost. And Durthu is going to try and clean up. Um, so yeah, this is getting pretty dicey for all of us. Deepwood Scouts are out of ammo. They've gained two chevrons, lots of kills. And now they're going to charge into the rear of the Graveguard, try and slow him down and kill him. But Manfred's still in the mix. I have some archers firing away. My uh, spell singer is holding down this uh, force with the awesome ability, the magic there, and it's going to kill the zomb the skeleton warriors. They're going to die out, and now she can go back and try and save my uh, units in the rear fighting the terror guys. I really need to take that big beast down because uh, it's doing a lot of damage to me. But in the woods, I do get some buffs, I believe. So despite the the terror that this thing is causing, I am going to be able to hold out a little bit longer than expected. And hopefully that'll allow my main line to uh, to win out its engagement. But yeah, this is really ominous with the graveyard in the background. I think Indy is out of summons on skeletons, but he definitely used it to full effect. Um, and here you can see my spell singer in there trying to get at this terror guys. And normally it wouldn't be a fair fight, but given the damage and the beating I've been able to give it, I should be okay in seeing it off. And Indies looks like he's gonna try and pull through and get out of there. Yep get some abilities. Terror guy's down at relatively low health. It's drained and hopefully it'll get critical binding soon. Um, this flank is going to be kind of destroying itself. I don't think anyone is going to survive this fight. 21 eternal guards uh, versus 39 grave guards. Yeah, he'll probably end up winning that, but not many troops left. On the right flank, this fight has been going on since the beginning. It's Durthu and Treekin against debilitated uh, Stern's guard and other units. So finally, I think I'm going to kill him. Corpse Guard is going to be my next target once I break through. But in the rear, you'll notice that Indy has his uh, Dire Wolves running around. So the Corpse Guard is going to try and boogie on out of there. Durthu has his sights set on it. Oh my god, those abilities are so cool. Cleaning that up. In the center, Manfred is definitely helping out. And he is still at full strength, which is really, really bad for me. Because he's a very tanky... Uh, melee Lord and so I'm gonna have to deal with the enemy foot troops But he's just gonna prance around and then I believe get a charge in at the flank and that's gonna finish off my center force So yeah, the center is gonna be a lost deal uh, For me, so I definitely need to try and wrap up my other sides Then you get the dire pack charging in to clean up my forces and so yeah, it's over in the center But it's also over on the right side and I'm coming out of that with Durthu at pretty high strength, and then Treekin also getting in the mix. I have some archers that came back from routing, and they're going to be firing at the Terror Geist, trying to do all the damage that they can. My Spell Singer is going to try and save my routing units, and then my Treekin are going to try and charge against the Grave Guard. Durthu is cleaning up the last of these Stern's Guardmen. And yep, now they have Critical Binding, and they're going to die, and we finish them off with the sword. So Durthu is going to go after that Corpse Cart. It's very slow. My Tree Kin are going to go back to the main fight. But this Corpse Cart is, one, slow, and two, relatively weak when it's getting hit by these massive uh, damage-dealing blows by Durthu. And it's going at maximum speed, but this is why you don't hitch your ride to zombies. So it should only take about five hits for me to kill this. We're at our second hit. But at the same time, trees don't move too fast. So that's going to be the third hit. Four. Okay, it's probably more than that. But anyways, back in the main fight. I've got my tree kin, two of them, into the mix. Dire Pack is going to die. So they pull out of there. And so Vlad is going to try and be the one who tanks out this battle. 
and that is it. The right flank is destroyed. The center, both of my units are kind of um, starting to waver. And so I desperately need those guys to come back. Terrorgeist is off chewing down my remaining archer units and coming back and it is not routed just yet and so now it's going to start the healing process which is not looking good uh, for my chances of victory. This unit here in the late game is very formidable. The terror it inflicts and also just its ability to heal uh, over time which is exactly what Indy's going to use it for. It does have a maximum pa uh, peak or cap I should say for how much it can heal um, and Indy's going to try and get that to the max. But now I see it is wavering, so it looks like, you know, things could go in my favor if I can get that critical binding to go off. My tree kin are still alive. I killed the corpse guard. Durthu's coming back with the general guard units. And so now it's going to come all down to a fight in the center. I did kill almost one of his other units, and so it's going to be my remaining troops essentially against Vlad von Karstein and Durthu. Or sorry, and the terror guys. I do pop an ability. Uh, 22 weapon, weapon damage plus 15 armor to try and help my guys stay strong. And now with reinforcements, I think we're going to be able to clean up the Graveguard and just make it a fight between heroes. Indy is going to use the last of his magical abilities here against Durthu. Drive down his melee attack, but still, he's going to be doing a lot of damage nonetheless. The Terror Geist is kind of flashing, so I was really hoping for that thing to die out so I could focus on Vlad von Karsten. You can see my swiping when I can focus on him does a lot of damage against Vlad. So yes, he's tanky, but I believe Durthu can probably take him out if he can keep landing these big blows. So this is a tree versus uh, just one of the lords of the undead here. So that's a pretty cool battle. And I think, as I said, I probably would have won that, but the Terror Geist does somewhat recover, and so now it's going to be able to come in, and two versus one doesn't look good for Durthu. And Vlad is going to do the sensible thing and get out of there and let his his little pet do the dirty work. I'm going to try and go after the Terror Geist, and it charges off just before it dies. But now I have Treekin, and they're going to be going after uh, Manfred, so they tackle him, and so we're kind of trading with our pets, fighting each other. I'm going to try and tie him down, see how much damage I can do. Durthu is going to try and go after the Terror Geist, as I have more Treekin coming in. So I really think that if I can knock out the uh, Ancillary units, I should be able to win. And now we're going to have a little bit of a fight, 1v1. So I definitely have more mass than uh, Manfred, so I should be able to just... Or, sorry, have, I've been calling him Manfred, it's Vlad von Karstein, sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'll be able to swat him around. And this is going to be a close engagement. So we'll see how this goes. But in the back, you'll notice that the Terror guys has seen off my tree and Oh my god, that should just slaughter a man. <laughs> and I have more tree coming in the mix, so this is really down to the wire. He's going to pop an ability on him. I believe that's going to be for some additional regeneration. But yeah, this is going to be really, really close. And then my Trikin are seen off. And then with that, Durthu is going to be uh, retreating. So this was really down to the wire. Two lords with their pets fighting one another. So that was really cool. Well played on all sides. Not quite sure how I could have done better. Uh, I think I did a good job. And I think what really w won it for Indy was his summoning of the skeletons in and amongst my archer ranks. Um, I should have kept my wild riders in the back to, you know, parry those blows because in the end it was the damage he dealt to my archers in light game and keeping them from, you know, had they been alive they could have taken out his terror geist and then I would have won from that point. No terror geist means Durthu beats Manfred and so yeah, I think that's how that would have gone. So lesson learned, um, you have to make a hard choice and defend your archers as opposed to defending your infantry where I was doing these hammer and anvils. So, you know, it's it's kind of situational at that point, but that is kind of my retrospective. So I'll try and keep that in mind in future battles. Nonetheless, it was a very bloody affair, and I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let's take a look at the final stats here at the end. Tons of kills on my Wild Riders. 167, they did work. 70 on the other one. Treekin also doing a lot of damage, uh, which is cool to see. Uh, Glade Guards with Starfire Shafts doing fairly good. Most of my eternal guards killing zombies and others. And the Deepwood Scouts actually with 144 seemingly paying for themselves. So that was great to see. And Durthu with 300 kills. That dude was tanking it out. Uh, on the other side for... Uh, and I only brought 846. So he definitely had more troops. On the other side, you'll notice that his dire pack got a lot of kills. That was mostly mopping up units. 
And uh, yeah, the rest of his guys didn't get necessarily too much, but those dire packs were cr critical. Felbats didn't do too much. I think I countered them pretty effectively. Graveguard doing pretty good. They traded against my spears, but again, they're more uh, costly. All those skeletons not doing too many kills. Vladimir Carson with 50, but mind you that his like seven or eight summons of skeletons was pretty pretty strong. Uh, Terror guys doing a lot of work in the end game. Uh, Corpse Cart also buffing his units and making it more resilient. Um, so yeah, that's it for the battle. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more, and uh, yeah, peace out, dudes.